Ken Boschkoff wins Thunder Bay's mayoral race. Council incumbents also find election success. And frustration over some delayed results. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Nearly 20 years after he last held the title of Thunder Bay Mayor, Ken Boschkoff is reclaiming the top elected office at City Hall. Boschkoff defeated four other candidates for the win after political newcomer Gary Mack made it a close finish at the end of the night. Mitchell Ringos reports. And I'm going to commit myself, body and soul, for the next four years to make sure that this city becomes the city we always dreamed it could be. After the last poll was finally tailed at around midnight, Boschkov won the election with 13,538 votes, or 38% of the total, ending up nearly 1,400 votes ahead of Gary Mack. Peng Yu was in third with over 6,000 votes, followed by Clint Harris and Robert Trepansky. Boschkov says he was surprised of how close the race was at the end, but sees what he has to do now heading into his new role. Well, it tells me that the people that, uh, that I will need on my team have to be much more tech savvy in terms of communicating to a wider range of audiences on a wider range of platforms. And uh, that, takes, uh, that takes some management, but we will do it, or I will make sure it's done. Mac was disappointed to find himself way back in third early in the night, but he jumped into a close second behind Boschkoff once the online voting numbers were released, leaving everyone waiting to the very end to see who won. And Mac hopes his strong second place finish shows there's an appetite for change in the city, specifically that residents want action on the issues he championed in his campaign, including homelessness, crime and infrastructure. I'm just I'm very grateful to everyone who voted for me. 12,000 people, that's amazing. Thank you to every single one. So many people that volunteered and donated and supported me along the way. Really, really awesome. So, um, so yeah, I'm really, I, feel, I feel good about it. Um, you know, disappointed maybe a little bit, but you know what? Who knows what's next? Something, something is on the horizon for me for sure. I have a, a very good feeling about that. And with a council of some familiar faces, but also some that are new, both Boschkoff and Mac were very hopeful this group can bring change to Thunder Bay. 50% want change. We want something different. At the doors, I heard over and over, we need something different at City Council. I hope that this council can bring something different because that is what the people want. I think we got a great combination of people and backgrounds and diversity. And I'm, I'm absolutely certain that uh, the intent that they've all in indicated to me about helping to solve the issues ahead of us and basically worldwide now, uh, that we're going to have a, a really strong team. Boschkoff says he'll be looking to take on meetings and preparatory work in the coming weeks before the new council takes office on November 15th. Mitchell Ringos, TBT News. Turning to the at-large race, three current city councillors were re-elected last night, along with two fresh faces. This election saw a record four women voted on the city council overall. Three of those secured seats in the at-large race. Cecilia Osbelos has the details. Election night for incumbent Mark Bentz wasn't much of a nail-biter, as he jumped off to an early lead and ended up with the most votes in the at-large race, over 15,000. Bentz has served on council for 15 of the past 19 years and spoke about his focus for this upcoming term. It's the crime, the homelessness, it's the beautification of our city. So I, I, I want to bring the, the right people to the table to deal with our homelessness, drug, gang problem. I think the province and the feds have a role to play there. The second highest vote getter in the race was Shelby Chung, receiving over 13,000 comfortably securing an at-large position after spending two terms as the Northwood representative. Chung says this campaign felt very rewarding. I still feel like I'm that little kid in the East End, you know, trying to scrounge up money to go get a bus and see a movie. Um, and, you know, and, and here I am, I think, setting the example for, for other kids. Like, I got invited to, to speak at schools, and um, it was just such a, a great process. Trevor Gertuga is the longest-serving council member and finished third in the at-large race this time. He says he's honored the voters have put their faith in him once again, but admits those election night butterflies never go away 
until the final poll closes. I'm always nervous, I'll tell you. This is like the sixth time running, and, and uh, I always try to run every campaign like I'm in be behind, you know, so then I try to work hard, and, and uh, yeah, that's, that's it, yeah, just a little nervous for sure. The first council newcomer to win an at-large spot this election was longtime realtor Rajni Agarwal, taking the fourth most votes, a little shy of 11,000. Agarwal is confident she'll hit the ground running at City Hall, but will always welcome guidance from those who have the experience. I need somebody with history to tell me what they did and what they didn't do, what could be done, what could be done better. Only they know. You can learn from your mistakes, you can learn from your successes, and they know what has happened. The fifth and final person to secure an at-large position was also a first-time candidate. Casey Atraney finished just 295 votes clear of sixth-place finisher Shane Judge. She thanked those who supported her this election and says she's ready to get to work. The three focuses for me will be crime, homelessness, and the opioid crisis. My team was right behind me and they said, just wait, we're only at poll number eight. Just wait for it to come. Just wait for it to come. And sure enough, boom, boom, boom. And next thing you know, I was at spot number five. Vasilio Spellos, TVT News. Moving now to the ward elections, the four incumbents who chose to run again all retained their seats last night, while new councillors were elected in the Nebing, Northwood and Red River wards. Mike Lang has that story. Andrew Folds retained current river in a landslide on Monday night, easily defeating his two challengers. He's held the ward since 2006 and believes that stronger relationships on council creates greater action. I think that council needs to be very strong, very deliberate, very bold and very courageous. And again, I come back to, you know, what do we want Thunder Bay to be? The dream of Thunder Bay is big and bold, and I think we need to work to, to achieve that. Kristen Oliver managed to retain her seat in the West Fort Ward, edging challenger John Collins by less than 300 votes. She also believes in bringing council closer together so they can be more productive. If we could build on those relationships and recognize that we can't do it alone and that we really need to find ways of moving the community forward, I think uh, we'll make some significant impacts over the next four years. Albert Aiello enters his second term in the McIntyre Ward after winning a two-person race against Brent Boyko. Aiello says he does not want council to become stagnant. We've had basically four years of zero growth and it's not sustainable. Uh, Treasurer's report said it itself. We can't continue on this, this path. We need growth. And um, yeah, I'm really going to look at uh, finding ways to grow the city. In McKellar, Brian Hamilton also enters his second term, beating challenger Lori Paris by over 1,000 votes. He believes he has a strong grasp on what he needs to continue doing for his ward. McKellar Ward is not without its, uh, its issues. Um, but these are issues I know well, and I think a lot of the people that, that have voted for me in this election kind of knew and they saw the work that I was doing. They like that kind of grassroots, hands-on approach. And uh, so my work over the next four years is going to reflect that. Dominic Pasqualino is one of the newcomers on City Council after a long career as a union leader. He won a five-person race in Northwood, taking more than 40% of the votes. He wants to focus on infrastructure and opportunities for all. I'd like to see the roads fixed up, but more than anything else, I'd really like to see jobs come into Thunder Bay so that we can afford to fix the roads. And I'm really hoping to capitalize on the mining expansion that's happening. So together, I think those things would work together, and that's what I'm hoping for. Greg Johnson is also new to City Council, as he won the Niebing Ward in a tight race against Ukes M1. Johnson says he wants to continue growing the outer regions of Thunder Bay. I ran and knocked on doors for months talking about uh, the property taxes that we have and the property values that we have and, and we need to get what I believe and what a lot of residents believe um, are some of the things that other parts of the city have. And finally, Michael Zacino is the new councillor for the Red River Ward, edging out Jason Veltri in a very close race. He's eager to get moving on the indoor turf facility project. I think the longer you wait, the higher the price will be, and we need to find the location where it's going to be. Is it going to be public-private, or is it going to be funded solely by a private enterprise and go from there? Mike Lang, TBT News. Human error in Shunya led to some slow results last night here in Thunder Bay. A Catholic school board candidate was accidentally left off Shunya's election ballot. That led to the declaration of a state of emergency under the Municipal Elections Act. 
The error wasn't announced in Thunder Bay until after the polls closed at 8 o'clock. The omission came as a shock to the impacted candidate, Matt Pearson. I know it's, I didn't do anything, but I feel kind of, you know, it was my name, right? So there's, I caused work for people and whatnot, but I hope, uh, from what I understand, it was an honest mistake and things happen and there's a process in place to, to get to the finish line here and I hope uh, it doesn't derail anything uh, operationally with the, the school board or too much negative impact on the, on the clerk's office. Pearson went to City Hall expecting to watch the results come in for the Catholic board race, but instead he and the other candidates noticed that no results were being posted due to that Shunya ballot issue. Pearson says he's disappointed, but he's taking the unexpected turn of events in stride. The clerk's office in Shunya says they didn't notice that Pearson's name was missing from their ballots due to human error during the proofing stage. They're now reviewing the legislation and policies and will make the necessary arrangements for the Catholic trustee election to be completed properly. Thunder Bay City Clerk Krista Power says although she oversees the school board elections, it's up to the Shunya clerk's office to determine the next steps. I am responsible for receiving the results. I am not responsible for conducting the election and all of those surrounding municipalities for the school boards. So what she did yesterday was proper. She found out she had an error. She declared an emergency. She voided her election and she's going through the process. It just means the rest of us need to respond. And the legislation guides the largest municipality in the geographic area, which is Thunder Bay, is responsible for receiving and certifying those results. Vote counting did go ahead for the Lakehead board election last night. Newcomer Leah Vanderway led the way among the eight trustee winners, followed by incumbents Ellen Chambers, Trudy Tukenhagen, George Saarinen, Ron Oikinen, Ryan Sitch, and first-time winners Danica LeBlanc and Pat Johansson. There was a significant drop in voter turnout for Thunder Bay's election this time around, but our municipality still scored higher than the provincial average. About 42.5% of eligible voters cast ballots this election. That's compared to almost 51% in 2018. The city still beat out the average across the province, which was only about 36%. Returning officer Krista Power says they'd like to understand more about the dip in the voter turnout and see what can be done to improve it next election. We will go out for public feedback to ask folks what they thought of our election process and hopefully that will help us to garner are they not interested in the electoral process across the board, whether that be federal, provincial and municipal. Is there something specific to the municipal election that we could do better um, to assist voters? Again, I think we worked extremely hard to try to make it as easy as possible to vote anywhere from your couch, from your car uh, or again at an in-person polling station. Power says comparing to similar sized municipalities like Sudbury could also help them understand where Thunder Bay stands in terms of the province-wide voter drop. New mayors were elected in many of the smaller cities and towns across the Northwest last night. Jonathan Wilson has the rundown starting with the rural municipalities near Thunder Bay. We'll start things off in Oliver Papoonge where Lucy Klusterhus has won a sixth straight term as mayor, winning a close race against challengers Rick Potter and Brandon Postuma. Klusterhus took over 900 of the total votes cast in the online-only ballot, 130 more than Potter, while Postuma finished a close third. In the municipality of Niebing, current councillor Mark Tiber is moving into the mayor's chair after defeating Ziggy Polkowski, who is attempting a political comeback. In Conmy, acting mayor Sheila Maxwell now has the job officially after winning a two-person race to replace Kevin Holland. Moving to the North Shore, councillor Paul Malachowski is now the mayor in Terrace Bay after defeating two-time mayoral candidate Gina LeBlanc. In Scriber, Kevin Mullins defeated three challengers for the mayor's chair, taking over 50% of the votes. In Nipigon, former economic development manager Suzanne Kuko defeated Councillor James Folds for the mayor's chair. In Manitouage, Councillor Jim Moffat is now in the top seat after defeating two-time mayor John McEachern, who finished way back in third. Looking to the western part of the region, Kenora Councillor Andrew Poirier is now the mayor of that city after defeating two other candidates, Andrew Scribilo and David Byers-Kitt, by a wide margin. In Dryden, political newcomer Jack Harrison is now the mayor of that city after soundly defeating Councillor Shane McKinnon. In Fort Francis, Councillor Andrew Halakis is now the mayor of that community. Over in Atticoken, Rob Ferguson defeated Robin Harper for the mayor's chair. In Ignace, Bill Gascon easily defeated current mayor Penny Lucas for the seat as the entire Ignace council was swept out of office. And in Red Lake, incumbent Fred Moda is back for another term, easily defeating his one challenger for the position. Jonathan Wilson, TBT News.
The Ontario government has announced new housing changes. The new plans will override municipal zoning laws, allowing up to three units on each residential lot without additional permits. Siobhan Morris has that and more from Queen's Park. For the minister in charge, the housing crisis has gone well beyond a case of nimbyism. We're at the point of banana, where it's built absolutely nothing anywhere near anyone. We can't continue to do the same things. We have to stop doing the things that aren't working and start to make the changes that Ontarians need. It means building up density near transit stations and waiving or cutting some fees developers pay. For example, if we want to ensure affordable housing and inclusionary zoning units, we want to make sure they're exempt from development charges from parkland dedication fees, and from community benefits charges. The opposition has questions about where that might leave cities whose budgets have been strained by the pandemic. We want to make sure the Ontario government has a real plan uh, to make sure municipalities um, have, you know, have the resources necessary to provide the building and the services for current and new residents. The government will allow up to three homes on one residential property without asking to bend bylaws, say a detached home with a basement apartment and another unit in the yard. The rule would apply across the province. The Green Party leader thinks the government could have done one better. Bringing in as of right zoning for quadplexes would enable us to significantly increase supply within our existing urban boundary and without having to weaken things like conservation authorities. The government says it's consolidating and streamlining how conservation authorities issue permits for homes in flood prone areas. Conservation authorities are uh, still going to play the role they were born to play, which is to protect people and property. But we uh, all need to be making sure we're doing our part to uh, achieve this goal of 1.5 million homes in the coming years. Those groups will evaluate which conservation lands might be able to be used for housing. That was CTV's Siobhan Morris reporting. Okay, turning to local weather now. Mitch, after some uh, a few days of above average temperatures, yeah. things are dropping towards seasonal values now. Yeah, we're starting to see those temperatures definitely drop. Last week we had a day was I think 18 definitely being spoiled. Now the temperatures on the drop as you see 12 is the high for today, but that was in the morning when we saw most of the rain carry over from the night. The rain didn't last all day, but also it didn't last with the temperature dropping down to six for the low throughout the day, making it even colder was that wind from the southwest five to 20 kilometers an hour. Other than rain, mostly cloudy skies throughout the day, not too much sunshine seen at all. As we head out west, even worse conditions. They've seen snow showers throughout the day. Currently cloudy skies in Fort Francis. Kenora sitting at one. Their temperature hovering around zero for most of the day. And that will continue over to Atacokan and Uppsala. Also seeing those snow showers carrying up to Red Lake at two throughout the day. Seeing a little bit of mix of snow. Currently mostly cloudy skies. A little bit warmer in Pickle Lake at the moment as we head farther northeast. No snow showers, but they saw plenty of rain throughout the day. There's their temperature was a little bit warmer. Eight in Greenstone currently seeing those cloudy skies we had east though not too much rain seen in Sault Ste. Marie throughout the day currently that has made its way in as this storm continues to make its way east 12 for the temperature though definitely a lot warmer as we head farther east into the region now tonight here in Thunder Bay no rain expected the temperature though is going to drop down to minus two. those clouds that we're seeing throughout today starting to finally break up. Maybe we can see the moon for just a little bit. The wind, though, is going to make everything a lot colder coming down from the northwest, jumping up to 36, uh, 32 kilometers an hour for the rest of the week, though. Temperatures starting to drop even more. We'll have more on that in just a little bit. OK, thanks a lot, Mitch. Well, the uh, Human Rights Tribunal has nixed a First Nations child welfare agreement between Ottawa and the Assembly of First Nations. We'll tell you why after the break. We have uh, folks, I'm sure, around the country, First Nations individuals that are, um, you know, wondering and worrying about when compensation might be due. 